My name's Liam Lacey and I'm the software developer behind the Alphasphere and its Alpha Life software. In this set of tutorial videos, I'm going to show you how to use the Alphasphere as a multi-channel MIDI instrument connected to a number of different digital audio workstations or MIDI sequencing applications that you may use. So multi-channel MIDI is a key feature of the Alphasphere and it allows you to play multiple virtual instruments and synths from different pads of the sphere at the same time. Just to give you a quick example of what you can do with a multi-channel MIDI setup, here I've got an Alpha Live project that has mapped each row of pads on the sphere to send MIDI data on different channels. I will walk you through how to program this exact setup later on in this video. I've also got Logic Pro open that is receiving this MIDI data and splitting the separate channels onto different instruments. Therefore, when I play pads on different rows as shown from the interaction on the user interface, you can hear that I'm able to trigger multiple instruments at the same time, building up layers of different sounds from just a single interface. So as mentioned before, in this first video I'm going to show you how to use this AlphaLive application to set up the AlphaSphere as a multi-channel MIDI instrument. And then in the second set of videos, I'm going to individually cover different DAWs in regards to how to connect multi-channel MIDI controllers, how to assign individual MIDI channels to instrument tracks, and finally give an example of how to map MIDI CC controls to software parameters. This is the application that you use to assign sounds and functions to each of the pads on the AlphaSphere. There are three main sections of the interface that you will use most often. These are the pad layout section, the pad setting section, and the toolbox. The pad layout section is a central circular section that represents a 2D version of the pad layout on the alpha sphere arranged in rows as if you are viewing the device from top down and the pads have been laid out flat. You use this section to select which pads you would like to display and edit the settings of as well as view visual feedback of the pads current state and mode. So for example when you press pads on the alpha sphere the relevant virtual pads on the interface will light up, responding to both touch and pressure. But you could also click on these pads to show and edit the settings of the selected pad. So this brings me on to the second main section, the pad setting section, here at the bottom right corner. This is the section where most controls for editing a pad's functionality and settings are displayed. The row of buttons at the top determine the mode of the selected pad, whereas the row of buttons below allow you to switch between the range of settings for the selected mode. The third section of Alpha Live that you will use a lot is the toolbox, which is this section up in the top right hand corner. This component contains a number of different items that can be applied to pads. This includes audio samples, MIDI scales and layouts, and preset settings, with the available items depending on the mode of the selected pads. As you can see, there are many other sections to the Alpha Live interface, but we'll cover these in later tutorials. Right, let's get down to programming the AlphaSphere to be a multi-channel MIDI instrument. To start with, I'm just going to create a new project by going to File and New. And now we've got an empty Alpha Live project with no settings set to any of the pads. First, we want to set all the pads to MIDI mode. To do this, click in the center of the pad layout section to select all pads, and then click on the MIDI mode button here and this will set every pad on the Alpha Sphere to be a MIDI pad. So the basic concept to using Alpha Live is by first selecting a pad or a group of pads, and then any settings that you apply using the pad setting section or the toolbox section will then be set to that selected group of pads. Next, we're going to set different MIDI channels to different rows of pads. To select a row of pads, hover the mouse over the area between the row until it is highlighted, and then click and that will select that row of pads. To set the MIDI channel, use this set of buttons that you can see here. So each button represents a different MIDI channel. For this tutorial, we're going to set row five to channel one. So we've already selected row five here, and by default, it is set to MIDI channel one. Let's set row four to MIDI channel two. Then let's select rows two and three so you can select multiple rows by command clicking on Mac or control clicking on Windows. And let's set these rows to MIDI channel three. 
and then let's select rows one and row six and let's set these rows to MIDI channel 16. So we have now given different rows of pads, different MIDI channels. Next, let's set up what MIDI notes are triggered from each pad. For rows five to two, let's give each row a minor scale with a root note of middle C or MIDI note 60. You do this by first selecting the row of pads, selecting the root note using the circular piano here. So by default, MIDI note 60 is selected and then going up to the toolbox and selecting the minor scale here. When you double click, you will see that the scale has been applied to the piano, which represents the selected set of pads. Now let's do this for the other rows. So let's select row four, MIDI note 60 and a minor scale. With rows two and three, Let's select them. This time, let's give them a root note of MIDI note 48. Select the minor scale. However, with rows one and six in this tutorial, we don't want these pads sending note data. So let's turn off the note data aspect of the pads by going to the trigger settings section of the pad settings section using this button here, and then using this power button to turn the note data off. So let's select rows one, and row six, and turning off the note data. Finally, we want to edit the pressure settings of all the pads. Each pad on the alpha sphere can send two types of MIDI data at the same time, note data, and then some form of continuous MIDI data, such as polyphonic aftertouch, CC messages, or pitch bend, which are all controlled via a pad's pressure. To set a pad's pressure settings, in the pad settings section, Select this button here to view the pressure settings. For this tutorial, let's set rows 5 and 4 to act as the modulation wheel that you would find on most MIDI keyboards using this button here. So let's select rows 5 and 4, reviewing the pressure settings, and let's set this to mod wheel. So now these rows will be sending note data as well as mod wheel data. For rows 1 and 6, let's set these pads to be sending CC messages, and that's using this button here. So let's select rows 1 and 6, and select CC messages. So by default, this will map unique controller numbers to each pad, but you can manually change the controller number using this control here. Remember that these are the pads with their MIDI note data turned off. So these pads will essentially act as just dials or sliders that you would find on common MIDI controllers. Finally, let's just turn off the pressure data for rows two and three. So to do that, select the rows, reviewing the pressure settings, and let's select this power button to turn the pressure data off. So these pads will only be sending note data. It's worth noting that there are a lot of features within Alpha Live that we only briefly covered here, but we'll be talking about them in much more detail in later tutorials. So we've now programmed the device to be a multi-channel MIDI instrument, as well as briefly going over how you can map MIDI notes to the pads, as well as setting what their pressure does. Make sure you save this Alpha Live project by going to File and Save. In part two of this tutorial, I will use this mapping to demonstrate how the Alpha Sphere can be connected to a number of different DAWs as a multi channel instrument. Each DAW will have its own video, so you only need to watch the videos that cover the DAWs that you personally use.